Hello, beautiful people of the internet. What's up? It's your girl, Akeisha. Today we are in my bathroom with no makeup on, and the reason being is that I wanna get a little personal with you guys. I wanna start a series where I'm talking about how you can read ingredients for yourself and really just understand what your products are doing so you can better choose products that will be effective and for you. I don't do a lot of reviews on my channel. The reason being is that my skin is different from yours, and regardless if we have the same type of skin type, combination, acne prone, whatever the case may be, something that may work for me may not work for you. I do all my product reviews on my blogs. So if you ever want to know my opinions about a product, I will put it there. If I do feel the need to make a video about it, then you know it's a product. But I do want to start a series where I'm talking about how to choose ingredients for yourself to make sure that when you are going to the counter, you're not lost and you're not also scared by some of the ingredients you're seeing. So leave your questions down below and I will make sure to cover this in an upcoming video in this series. If this is your first time seeing my face, then welcome to my channel. My name is Lakeisha. I post a lot of skincare, beauty, makeup, hair, lifestyle videos. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, then please go ahead and subscribe. And if you are returning back to my channel because you got the notification, then what's up Adam's family? In this video, we're going to be touching very broadly how to read ingredient lists. Without further ado, let's get started. So number one, let's talk about some of the resources. When I first started getting into skincare, one of the first places that I ran to was the EWG website. Now this is a skin deep database that basically grades products on whether it's hazardous to your skin or not, whether it's there's been any studies found that it's been irritating to your skin. It has a really simple design. It makes it really easy to read. You can also even search up products that you already own and figure out what ingredients in there can be hazardous to your skin. Now, with any type of hazardous labeling website, I would advise to seek another opinion because studies are coming out every day. Some places may take information that are a little bit outdated. So you wanna make sure that you're getting both sides of the coin. At the end of the day, when it comes to skincare ingredients, not everything is so black and white. So you need to have difference of opinions. And that's why I go to a couple of different websites. The second beginner-friendly website that became my best friend was Insta Decoder. Now this is a website similar to EWG where you you can actually input your products and it will pull up the entire list, tell you what the ingredients do, and also if it's irritating to your skin as well. So this will just give you a good representation of the product, just so you can understand kind of how your ingredients will work together. There are different types of ingredients from active ingredients to emollients, humectants, preservatives, they all do different things and some of them kind of overlap. So this website is a really good, easy place to get that all in one in, in one go and it can also uh, give you ingredient information as well. So that's really cool. Now, like I said, always important to cross-reference. So another place you'll want to look is called Cause DNA. Don't worry guys, I will link all of these down below in the description, but this is another place where you can literally copy and paste the ingredient list and it will give you all that information. Now, if you are someone who is looking for more products that are vegan or cruelty-free or all those other green, environmentally friendly things, then consider checking out a website by one of my favorite bloggers. The website is called Logical Harmony, and she's already done most of the legwork for you, compiling lists of brands of makeup, uh, skincare that um, commit to being eco-friendly, vegan, cruelty-free, so on and so forth. And this is really essential for me personally because when you look at where a product is based, so that whether this is Canada, USA, Europe, China, they all have different standards for ingredients. Something that may be banned in one country may not be banned in another one based on research. Also testing purposes. We all know that in China they do tests on animals. So once a, a product is being shipped to China, you may not want to purchase it if you don't want it to be um, tested on animals if that is something that's important to you. She does all of that work for you and makes all those lists separate, clear lines are already drawn for you. So that's really cool because this will narrow down your search and really help you to figure out what products that you even want to spend the time looking up ingredients. Because honestly, the first couple times you're gonna look at it, you're gonna be on those websites that I mentioned before, like every single ingredient because it takes, it's a skill that you're learning basically. 
you're learning how to recognize some of these ingredients. If you are a little bit more advanced, another place you want to look at is, of course, Paula's Choice website. She has an amazing ingredient dictionary. This is like my best friend. The way that it's written out, it makes it so much easier to dive deep on specific ingredients. When looking at your ingredients, you want to pay attention to the first five ingredients listed in your product. The reason being, the first five ingredients are going to be the most potent. This is the base of your product. So if the first ingredient is water, you know that it's a water-based product. This is probably about 50% of your product, which is good if that's what you're looking for. Another reason why this is really important is because let's say you are looking for a vitamin C serum. So you go online and you search a vitamin C serum and this beautiful product comes up and this product has the these bold claims that it will get rid of fine lines, it's good for dark spots and wrinkles, and does all these great things for your skin. You can listen to the claims or you can look at the ingredient list. So if the ingredient list has, let's say, l ascorbic acid, you know that that is a great ingredient. This is a really potent form of vitamin C that has been proven to be effective for your skin. Now if this ascorbic acid is like 10th or 15th on the ingredient list, you know that although this product claims to be a vitamin C, the percentage of vitamin C that you're getting in the actual product will not be effective on your skin if it's 15 ingredients down into the list. This is why this is really important because a lot of really expensive, fancy serums and products will have all these bold claims of the things that it's gonna do. But once you really look at the ingredient list, they may not be using a potent form of the ingredient or it may be way, way down on the ingredient list. This is why this is a very important skill to have so that you can be an educated consumer and not waste hundreds of dollars on products that are not gonna do anything better for your skin than shea butter. So now you know what are the most potent ingredients in your product. But how do you make sense of the rest of the ingredients, the mumbo jumbo down below? Well, you want to look for something called the 1% line. Now this isn't actually a physical, literal line. It's more of a, a marker that uh, brands use to be able to mix up the ingredients at the bottom. And they can put this in any order they want for patent reasons and to make sure that other people don't copy their formulations, so long as they're under 1%. Once you practice this a few times, it'll be really easy to pick out where that 1% line is. One of the ingredients that I generally use as a marker is wherever I find an ingredient called phenoxyethanol. Now this is a type of preservative that is used in a lot of cosmetics because it's generally safe on your skin in doses of 1%. So um, wherever I see that 1%, I know that all the other ingredients, no matter what order they are, are just generally around 1% of the product. If you're looking for an exfoliating toner and you check the ingredient list and you find glycolic acid beneath phenoxyethanol, you might as well put it back on the shelf because it's not going to be what you're looking for. At that point, your glycolic acid is most, most likely there for just the humectant purposes or maybe a texturizer. Generally speaking, when you're looking for your products, you want to see a humectant. So this would be hyaluronic acid, glycerin, those are very hydrating ingredients that are going to trap moisture in the skin and keep your skin hydrated to prevent transepidermal uh, water loss. So now let's look at one of my favorite products and go through the ingredient list. I've got here CeraVe's Daily Moisturizing Lotion for Normal to Dry Skin. Let's go through this. Okay, so let's analyze this a little bit. The first couple of ingredients, we have the water, we have the humectants, we have the things that's gonna bind them together. We have the uh, fatty alcohols that are gonna help with the emulsion of the product as well as the texture, how it's gonna feel. We have the ceramides that are gonna help to rebuild the skin. So it's literally doing what it said. So let's find that 1% line it's typically anywhere where you'll see uh, preservatives or pH adjusters stuff like that any stabilizers that's where you're gonna see that type of ingredient so I'm gonna say it's kind of around where the phosphates are because these are the pH adjusters you don't really need a lot of pH adjusters because it's probably just by a little bit that you're changing it so I'm gonna say that that's where it is and the ingredients below are perfect to um, make the product last <laughs> And to also make it you know not degrade on itself so this is a perfect example of how i would read an ingredient list i hope you guys really enjoyed this video comment down below all of your questions i do a lot of research in my free time and um tell me what else you want to know about ingredients i have a whole playlist of ideas coming up in my mind but i want to hear from you guys as well remember to click over here to see some of my previous videos and as always stay gorgeous stay fabulous because i will see you lovely ladies and gents in my next video bye